Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be on an essential World Chalice combo. This is a combo that, if you want to play World Chalice, you have to know this one. This is like the basic one. Like, even more of like basic than like knowing what World Legacy, World Chalice, and uh, Venus does. Like, this is the one card Venus combo that some of you undoubtedly know about. Uh, there's definitely an optimal way and a not optimal way to do it. This is the optimal way to do it. This gets you tuned in Gearsu Draw 3. Uh, gets you, uh, so you'll have 7 cards total in hand because the only card you invested was Venus. Uh, gets you to a good board state. You have not used Orem's effect yet. You have a bunch of different stuff going on in terms of how you can meld the board state going forward. But this combo does have some glaring flaws in how it interacts with your deck as a whole, as a like treating it as a resource. But that is something that, like, unfortunately... You have to take that. So this is a combo that if you don't know how to do it, one card Venus combo plus six gets you all these cards. But if you watched my revisiting World Childs video that I put out a couple days back, I'm pretty vocal about how I don't like this one card Venus combo. Like you can make the combo so much better in terms of eliminating the flaws that it has by just introducing one free special summon into it. It doesn't even have to be a monster with an effect doesn't have to be a vanilla, has to have no specific qualities. It just has to be a fifth monster that you can just summon alongside Venus and your three Shine Balls. And the combo gets infinitely better for your resource management for your World Chalice deck because it eliminates a lot of the flaws that get introduced, like having to get rid of your Venus and then banish your Venus so it's not recurrable, um, or having to banish multiple Shine Balls or whatever. Like It solves those flaws and then also puts you in a better board state overall for when you're drawing off Ningirsu to extend further, all that sort of stuff. But that is not within the scope of this video. This video, I'm just showing you the Essential World Chalice combo. If there's no combo you know, you definitely should know this one, the one card Venus combo, because it is the combo that you have the most potential of like just stumbling into. You have to open like multiple cards to do other combos, but Venus, one card combo, it's clean. It looks clean. It is clean. It's a good combo. I can't say that it's not because it generates so much raw card advantage, but I personally think that it's uh, questionable to ruin your uh, deck's resources in the way that you have to to make this combo live. But anyway, I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to show you how to perform the one card Venus combo. If you don't know how to do it, you're about to find out. All right, so one card combo, Venus only. You have four of the cards in hand. Those cards are obviously nothing to write home about. Maybe they're additional copies of Shine Balls. Maybe they're Kyoto Waterfronts. Maybe they're something. Maybe they are just something, but they are not anything that's helping you combo. Venus can get you all the way there, even though the combo does have its glaring flaws. Anyway, you're going to normal summon Venus in the far left monster zone, and you're going to use its effect three times to summon three Shine Balls. That sounds reasonable to me. Does it sound reasonable to you? I think it does. Anyway, you're going to link away with Venus and a Shine Ball, which is already the point where I start hating everything about what we're doing, into Union Carrier. And then you're going to use Union Carrier's effect to equip Eva onto one of your Shine Balls, and then you're going to link that specific Shine Ball away into Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. Now from here, you have a decision you can make. One decision is more optimal than the other, and so that is the decision I try to make. The decision I like to make is... Banishing Venus and one Shine Ball for Eva because you have to banish two here or else you're not going to be able to do combo because you need to get an extra monster into circulation next to the Lee. Now, your other option would be to banish two Shine Balls and leave the Venus engraved to get back later, meaning it's still in circulation, but the issue being you only have one Shine Ball, meaning that you are still lowering what Exodius and Pot of Avarice and cards like Digesto Emerald can do for you in your strategy. If you're going to try and like preserve the quality of those cards, banishing Venus and one Shine Ball is correct because at least it forces you to get to another Venus, but you still have two Shine Balls that you can like start working around with resources. So you're going to add Lee and then Trickstar Lily Bell or Wadapon. I, I I would rather be playing Wadapon, but I forgot to buy one and I don't own one. So Trickstar Lily Bell functionally does the same thing as Wadapon, but Wadapon is superior to Trickstar Lily Bell in two different ways. One, the Wadapon is not a hard once per turn to special summon itself. So if you add it in this instance and then special it, and then link away with it, and then it goes back into your deck off of Exodius, Pot of Avarice, Digesto Emerald, more likely it's going to just be Exodius, because I don't think you're going to choose to put it back off anything else. 
if you draw it off of Emerald, Avarice, Saryuja, Ningirsu, and you've already special summoned it once, it sp still special summons itself again. Where Lily Bell is a hard once per turn to special itself, so it will never special itself again. It will never be an extender, even if it inadvertently ends up back in your deck because Exodius doesn't care who you are. You're a monster back in the deck, right? So, Wadapon is uh, superior for that quality, and also, once it's special summoned, Wadapon being a level 1 fairy instead of a level 2 is also relevant, because it means that you could have, like, Transmodify as an extender with Venus for this one card play. Like, Venus plus Transmodify plus 3 blank cards is a better play than just Venus if you're using Wadapon, because you could summon Wadapon and then Transmodify Wadapon into Lee and then Lee add World Legacy World Chalice. So you wouldn't have to add Lee off Eva because you would be getting it off Transmodify. Um, so you get to keep Venus in your graveyard and only have to banish one for Eva, and that one can be a Shine Ball. Anyway, carrying on, functionally, for what the purpose of this combo is, there's no difference between Lily Bell and Wadapon in terms of what I'm showing you. This is just a card I had on hand. I need to purchase a Wadapon if I'm ever going to play this deck anywhere. Basically, because... It's special summoning itself more than once, and being a transmodify target, I'm sure will definitely come up a lot over this card. Doing 800 direct! <laughs> uh, anyway, so, carrying on, uh, what we are going to do from here is we are going to link the uh, Lily Bell, in this instance, and the Emduk away into a throwaway link too. It just has to have a sideway pointing arrow. Uh, in this case, Nightmare Cerberus is perfectly fine. Uh, it could be Nightmare Phoenix. It doesn't even matter which way it points. It just has to point to a zone for you to summon Imduk into. Your Imduk and Grave is going to trigger to special summon Lee from your hand. And then you're going to add World Legacy World Chalice from your deck to your hand off of the Lee. Now, we had to link away the Venus so we'd keep a vanilla on the board so we can link it away into another Imduk. So that we could gain the additional normal summon for World Legacy World Chalice. And what we're going to do is we're going to tribute Lee to summon World Legacy World Chalice. And then we're going to send Union Carrier for Lee's effect to add Lee back to our hand, and then opening up the EMZs. So, from here we're going to link our two World Chalice monsters, World Legacy World Chalice and Imduk, into Orum the World Chalice Blademaster. And then from here you can choose to use Imduk's Grave Effect to summon Lee from your hand. It doesn't really matter, per se. Um, but you're definitely using World Legacy World Chalice. It doesn't matter if you use it here or later off of Ningirsu. Um, I mean, this plays around Ash, but I mean, you'd probably have gotten Ashed on Eva anyway, because probably, like, a card that says add two, pretty sure that's getting Ashed. I digress. If the World Legacy World Chalice resolves, you're getting World Chalice Guard Dragon, and you are getting uh, a vanilla out of your deck. Or another copy of Lee. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to be something you can use with the Guard Dragon to make Ib. So, you're going to link those two away into Ib. Uh, that's Imduk. There's Ib. Sleeves were stuck together. Uh, Ib... And then you're going to banish the World Chalice Guard Dragon to summon one of your Shine Balls or World Chalice Vanilla if you got that back to this zone. And then you're going to link this away into Imduk. And then you're going to link the Imduk and the Cerberus in this case into Ningirsu. And then you're going to go chain link one Ningirsu and then chain link two Imduk if you kept the Lee in your hand. If you summoned Lee off of the first Imduk uh, when you were uh, doing World Legacy World Chalice, then your Lee would already be in this zone. Uh, but regardless, it's going to be the same uh, outcome either way. It's either Ningirsu, Chainlink 2, Imduk, or it's just Ningirsu because Lee is already on the board. Regardless, you're drawing three cards, right? So this is where you get to off of one Venus. Off of one Venus, you get to a plus six. You get to seven cards total. But the problem is, is that your resource management is sort of all over the place. You've already soaked up all your best World Chalice name effects. And... The only real thing you would have as far as extension beyond this would be like making Saryuja or doing other things, but then also mainly having cards like Exodius and Pot of Avarice because these are the superior extenders. Even if they're only putting back two Shine Balls each time, they're still fantastic cards because they're drawing you cards or they're existing as a body in their own way. Um, basically, like you end up in a position where you have to access Venus again also while drawing these cards so you have to draw these cards and then also like draw something like transmodify for the lee or you have to draw another copy of venus um or you have to draw like foolish burial so you can foolish another venus and orum can pop lee to revive it you have to do that on top of also drawing your superior extenders which is like kind of a problem it's kind of a big glaring flaw you have to get to these cards in combination with one another, where you already performed combos. 
Um, it would be different if you were able to draw a bunch of cards that you had not used yet, like World Legacy, World Chalice, or World Chalice, Guard Dragon, or whatever. But you have to use those cards to step up into the like ending board that you need to get to. So it gets kind of strange. You're not really capable of doing a lot of like building upon this if you're just using the Venus combo. If you're using Venus plus any monster, as soon as you add any monster into the mix or you open Venus Transmodify or whatever, as soon as you add one mindless, worthless extender that doesn't do anything spectacular into the mix, the combo gets so much better and so many flaws get alleviated because you get to keep Venus on board and do things like draw three combos and stuff. So it just gets better and the flaws get like ironed out, but this is still a good combo because it's still a plus six. I can never with a straight face tell you that a plus six to raw card advantage off of one card, one card turning into seven, that leads you into, at bare minimum, a four negate Opelousa. I can never really tell you that that's bad because it's not bad. It's just questionably, like it's morally questionable because it's it's like artificially lowering the, uh, the impact ceiling of the rest of your deck by doing this. So that's basically it. Uh, that's all I really wanted to show you. Uh, I wanted to make sure you guys knew the optimal way to do this essential World Chalice combo. This is essential. You need to know how to combo with just Venus if you, that comes up. Because if it comes up, you need to know how to do it 100%. There's no way that you can get away with not knowing how to do it. Uh, because sometimes you will just open Venus. And like four blanks. And like you have to deal with that. So you need to know this combo. It's a good combo. I don't personally enjoy doing it because it literally grinds up the, the ceiling of the deck and makes it a shell of its former self. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As always, I will be doing some more uh, intricate World Chalice stuff in the future, uh, like Venus plus Pot of Avarice. That's an interesting combo. Uh, it's very like funny how it gets performed as well. Uh, it's one of the ones that stands out in my mind. Um, and all that sort of stuff. I definitely want to go deep into the World Chalice Think Tank a little bit and then jump back to Dragoonity as we get closer to the new cards coming out in Ghosts from the Past. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Take care, and I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Hope to see you around again soon.